Hello everyone, my name is Dennis with Donkey Sec or Donkey Security, whatever your heart desires. And in today's video, we're going to be learning how to pass the SAL 1 exam. Before we do start this video, I did post a video a week ago about if the SAL 1 exam is worth it for someone like yourself or someone like myself, who's a cybersecurity intern that should take the exam or not. Yeah, that's a little bit off track, but in order to pass the SAL 1 exam, before we even dive deep into how to pass it, you must look over the notes. Once you're in the exam, obviously this is not the exam, this is phishing unfolding. It'll have SOC handover notes and you have to make sure you read those th notes thoroughly. Otherwise you could lose on some points. So the first topic we're going to be discussing about is alert classification, whether or not we should mark it as a true positive or a false positive. So the easier one, false positive, you always want to mark an alert false positive if the alert doesn't harm the organization. So an example would be I, a HR person, install a malware, but our antivirus software flags the malware and automatically removes the malware off my system. That would be considered a false positive because it didn't harm the organization. So a true positive would be something that does harm the organization. For example, such as I, a HR, I, I'm like low key uh, messing with HR here. I, a uh, finance person, open up a Excel spreadsheet that has con. So a true positive will be something that does harm the organization. For example, I am in finance and I open a malicious macro Excel spreadsheet. In that spreadsheet, it contains malicious macros, which starts the initial access, which then later starts the cyber kill chain where the attacker main goal is to complete actions on objectives. So yeah, after closing our alert, we mark it, let's say true positive, and it will say, does this alert require escalation? Escalation is required when additional actions or, you know, remediation is required for that specific alert. As well as if that alert connects to a, another alert, example for the malicious macro spreadsheet file, where the initial access would be the spreadsheet file, and then the alert that is connected to the spreadsheet alert would be the alert of data exfiltration. And then when escalation is not required, when the alert doesn't harm the organization in any way. Now I already did give an example of the uh, malware that was flagged by the antivirus software solution. Arguably one of the most controversial things about this exam is the case report. Because the case report, it is graded by AI, so you have to be careful and you have to include everything. Good thing I found an actual two examples of TriHackMe's best quote-unquote case report for this exam. Obviously, you know, screenshot, take a picture of this when you can use it in the exam because all the resources you can use, it's open game, open book. Arguably one of the most beneficial things is to look at an actual practice report, such as a true positive and a false positive. Both of these case reports or practice reports, they mention the five W's, who, what, when, where, how, and they also include any uh, recommendations for remediation. And I'll give you one last hint. Make sure to look at the sock handler notes. Make sure to look at it thoroughly because it will give you some pointers and some heads up from other SOC analysts that had the assignment, but they somehow forgot about it. So they give you the handover notes of their observations and they let you take control. So in my opinion, I didn't really use Splunk that much in exam. I know Splunk is a really good source. I did use Splunk a lot in my BTL1 exam. However, in this exam, you don't necessarily need Splunk because in the alert section, it'll tell you all of the data that you need. Yeah, you, you can look at the suspicious IP and maybe you could connect the dots to the alert to determine if it's uh, false positive or true positive. But in my opinion, there's a way better tool to be using. And this is in the analyst VM. Click to try detect this. So obviously it's not working in my specific uh, SOC simulator instance. So we're just going to be going over a old video and this is the try detect this. So it's a secure file and URL analysis tool and in the URL slash IP check, you can enter a URL or IP address to analyze and it will tell you if the IP is malicious or not. And as well as it has a file analysis tool where you can, you know, upload a file or drag and drop using the only the virtual machine that is listed in the uh, SOC simulator. An example here, I'm uploading a LNK file and it's analyzed as malicious. 
another tip here is to not use you know the popular uh free platforms such as virus total any run talos any uh threat intelligence platform and the reason why is because this is only try hack me strictly content it, the hashes such as the md5 hash or the sha hash values i don't think they're going to show up in virus total best tip i have take your time relax it took me five hours and i believe the exam the first section is one hour and the other two sections is two hours so that's total of five hours i had like 12 minutes left to spare so the best thing you could do is take your time relax it's not a sprint it's a marathon and if you do fail you still have one more exam attempt so make sure you are looking at what the bot is telling you such as the how you scored section and making sure to do that in the next exam so you could pass the next exam but yeah this video is solely a tips and tricks video watching this video will not guarantee you passing the exam make sure you watch other sources do the two sock simulators that they have for free and do all of what i said in the video nah i'm just kidding but like always ladies and gentlemen let me know if i miss anything or not let me know in the comment section for sure and i'll see you when i see you in my next video peace out <laughs>